West West show. Okay, we're back at the West West Sportscast. Here with my boys Lando and uh, Adam. What's up, brothers? How's it going? Hello, Zo. What's up? It's good. Internet's so good this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. Hey, man, we're here to talk some more in the NFL. So, so week six has just gone past. I'm just going to go through uh, the table. So, real quickly, the American Football Conference at the East, you got the Bills at the top. I'm just going to name the um, top teams of each of the divisions. So in the east, you got the Bills, West, Chargers, uh, North, Ravens, and South, Titans. The NFC, you got the Cowboys at the east. West, you got the Cardinals. North, you got the Packers. And South, the Bucks. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so week six. What did we learn from week six? So the first thing we learned was that um, it, it took the Jags to go overseas to win the, the first game of the of the season. That, that was that was surprising, eh? How they how they lost? Not no one wants to give um, the Jags their first win, you know. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it, it's funny on that one too, was because Dolphins are only on one win as well, Lee, and that was against the Pets in week one, wasn't it? So they're on a bit of a a losing streak right now considering that I think weren't they in a they were in consideration for playoffs last year or wild card um, I think their their coach who came from the Patriots um, managed to you know get that get that team ticking but I guess it shows because I know that they had a depleted secondary because they spent a lot of money on that um those two cornerbacks Byron Jones from the Cowboys two years ago and I think they gave Xavier and Howard who was the interception interception leader last year of about 10 or something I um, mean he's injured too so you know just go, goes to show you, you know you got to have a back end that can hold you up especially when um when the game gets a little bit tight it's, it's just funny eh, how the game's like sort of moved away from a rushing game to a passing game and how dynamic you need your receivers or your school players to be so yeah, yeah. was it the think, Jags um, was it a 54 knew, game losing your thoughts, streak Scox was it like fifty-four game streak or something that <laughs> that, the, that the Jags just snipped against the Dolphins? Like, oh. I think the Dolphins are in trouble, eh? Like, I I read earlier today yeah. that there's there's a trade, and I mean this could be completely the wrong person to blame it on, right? Because like as you said, like the D and everything, but they're trying to trade tour for Des- Deshaun Watson, so it's just like I think they're trying to ring the alarm bells and find the scapegoat in the wrong place, eh? Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, just with, I, just some like things from that that Dolphins game, as like you look at it, like how you're saying, Skux was like they're trying to get rid of tour, but you look at the balance, there was like 48 passes versus 20 rushes, bro. Like how, like come on, man, if you want to give the guy a shot, like at least at least give him a shot in regards to the game plan. That's it's too easy to to tee off on him, and he's got like this weird flowing motion. Have you seen it? And plus he's a lefty. Yeah, <laughs> it's like crazy as sort of like throwing motion, eh? But yeah. it's got a quick release once the ball comes out. It's just getting the ball to that point. Yeah, it's not like being and a um, southpaw. Where it's I think like, like someone that stuck out was Mike Kosicki, the tight end. Mm. Carry on, bro. I was gonna say it's like opposite to being like a southpaw, right? Where like that's kind of you know it's hard for a for your the person you're fighting against in a boxing match to to, to understand, but like when. His weird like throwing actions like easy mm. for for defenses to just like eat up, but yeah, it's just he's not the problem right now. Nah, definitely not. I think it's I think whenever you're trying to build that team, it always starts in the trenches, and you got to have that O line to get that running game going. And I think they put a lot of onus on um that Mike, I think his name Gaskins, to sort of like generate generate that balance for Tour to not put him in that situation where he has to carry the team um, especially overseas bro you're going like across the Atlantic Ocean to go play in London man <laughs> you know gotta make it make it easy for yourself eh? and um, I think it's just as I was watching um, just, just some observations about the lines just poor execution eh, on the 4th and 1 like they put themselves in those situ- um, rather, they put them themselves in that situation to like you know get some momentum but then the O-line just like and doesn't want to pull finger and um you know and dig dig deep or get dirty yeah, and play that big man's game so um yeah that was sort of like something that i i 
I guess I observed from that game, and um, and just like, uh, I guess like one shining light is that tight end Mike Kosicki, eh? but that guy was beast, man. He was making like catches on the middle, on the sideline. I think he did one like he sort of toe tapped it, but you know, flipping arm hands away outside the the outward line bro, and he's catching the ball, making you know for his for his quarterback. Eh? He just needed from from the rest of the wide the rest of the wide receivers to step up and do that for him too. So that was something in regards to um to the Dolphins to work on, I guess for for next week or get them out of out of that pit. Hmm. Adam, your your team, um, Tampa Bay. We 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 briefly touched on them last podcast because they had the game early on on that, on that Thursday. But um, was there any anything happening from from then to now? Anything in the news on that about your team? Um, I haven't I haven't been keeping up in terms of like any um, updates on the injuries. Like I know there are a few a few um of the the. D line, a few guys down. I think there are a few tight ends down. I don't know if Gronk's back, but um, I think they, um, you know, mid season at the well, not mid season, but kind of at this point, like they're in a good position. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of let off. Like they got Chicago this week, they got the Bears, so you know, no, no shun to the Bears, but you know, it's the Bears, so they can probably take the gas off for a, a few games coming forward to kind of rebuild and and um, let Brady kind of get his body right and things like that so I think this this season knowing that they won the the Super Bowl last season they can kind of um and also they're they're five and one so last season you know they're up and down they were learning each other I think they kind of have that time now if you think like you know when the Patriots had Brady they kind of like get into a position where they're like way way ahead of the rest of the pack and then they're like cool just chill for a little bit like let us generate for our second steam um and saying that you know, Saints, well, Saints are 3-2. and two. They're the next closest team, but um, you just can't really take your foot off. Um, in that side, in the in the NFC, you've got you've got the Cowboys, the Cardinals, and the Packers all, you know, all on the same side, and they're all 5-1 they're all and one apart from the Cardinals, who are 6-0. and oh. So, I mean, they're probably looking forward now. They probably think they're in a good position. So, yeah, wouldn't expect to see too much kind of troubling them in the next couple of weeks. Hmm. Last episode as well, we talked about the the five and one teams, and um, the Chargers were one of those teams. Now they met the the Ravens in week six, and man, the Ravens took them to school. Hundred <coughs> percent. Did you, any of you watch the game? Yeah, I did. And it was Ooh. like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna say it was it was a little bit boring to watch because it was an easy game for before the Ravens, you know. But um. What would you guys take on that? And are the Ravens the team to beat now? Are, are they up there with um, the the Bills and, and Bucks? Ooh. I don't know. It depends how. Um, it depends on Lamar Jackson, bro. Like that that team's predicated on him. If if he's if he doesn't have that will, because he's carried like I think spoke about it last week. That will, that desire to your boys follow me. Um, if if he if that doesn't show up on a consistent basis or he doesn't he doesn't keep it up, I think um what what's their backup plan or what's their contingency, what's their plan B? You know they they're gonna run the game, they're gonna run the ball all the time and like then they don't have a Derrick Henry, to be honest. Someone who can like, you know, yo, I'm gonna bust you. <laughs> I'm I'm six foot six foot three. I'm two hundred and fifty seven pounds, bro, and I run like the wind. <laughs> you know, I got the forearm of like a flipping steel rod, but you know, if you're trying to expect that from from Lamar Jackson then, you know, the coaches have to have to get some more balance. Um and what I mean by balance is not him running the ball as much. Um, Because the last thing you want to do, and this is always the case, doesn't matter what's competitive team or professional team you are, it's how um, who's got the least injuries come playoff time. You know, and the last thing you want, bro, is your MVP man just, you know, got a got a sore knee, got a hammy, got an ankle, got turf toe or whatever. Um, So I think the thing around them is to okay, how can we protect them um, um, moving ahead in the season? So they so they can still be top of the um, AFC North, you know. Looks look man, you're like obviously your Steelers are in that divisionals, you know. They got a they got a good win, bro. 
Um, but then there's also the Bengals as well. So that that's a and the Browns aren't like the Browns roster is like stacked, bro. Defensively they're stacked. So you know what what are you gonna do? Um, you can't let off in your division. If you do, then you're gonna find yourself not in in flip. I don't know what is it seed seven or something. You know so. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, man. It's a tough one for the Ravens, but it's a good one. To put it that way. You rather be five and one, e eh? <laughs> five and one, and you beat like three teams. You know, they they've got a winning record and their playoff teams as well. So you know your you know your team's identity is tough, and the Ra- like the Ravens have always been there. You know, since Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and their me. As you know, us. <laughs> <laughs> You got any takes on the on the Ravens, um, Adam? Yeah, it's um, it's interesting, eh? Like, I'm I'm just looking through, kind of, who they've played so far, and you know they lost their first game to the Raiders. Raiders are four and two. Um, you know, you can argue that they beat the Chiefs, but then the Chiefs are struggling right now, right? Um, you know, looking at their other results this season, they beat they beat the Lions nineteen seventeen. You know, so, um, but it's more just to to, um, you know, piggyback on what Lando said. It, it's all in, in in Lamar and how he how he progresses through the season. You know, I mean, beat the Broncos twenty three seven. Like, Broncos aren't you know too hot. So he's the the good thing is is that they're beating the teams convincingly that they should. Like they're not really kind of, you know, just beating below average teams. And I mean, looking forward, they got a pretty pretty good. Uh, walk towards the end of the season in terms of playing tough teams. So I think if they can keep that consistency um, across the board as well, like obviously Lamar Jackson's going to be their wild card and he's he's going to have that razzle-dazzle that we've seen um, Mahomes have in the past couple of seasons. Um, but I think they got a, a deep enough squad too. If they can if they can string it together and get that consistency like what Lando was saying, I think, um, yeah, they're in a shot to to push some of those more experienced teams, you know, if you get the likes of the Packers and, you know, Rogers and Tampa Bay and the, the older heads through, um, it just takes that young guy to be hungry. And Lamar has that sort of, he's got that attitude that we said that just like, you know, follow me. And it's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder with everyone kind of putting Mahomes above him. So he, he's definitely one to watch. Like I wouldn't put it past him to, um, you know, up, pull, pull off uh, an upset in the postseason if it comes to it. You were cutting out there a little bit, but uh, that's okay. The software captured all of that, so uh, that's all right. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, this was an action-packed week six, of, I think, because man, we had three overtime games and a potential fourth one with uh, the Bills and um, and Titans at the end there. But um, I just want to talk about the um, Pats and um, what did they play? Pats Cowboys game. Pats Cowboys. Yeah. yeah. Lando, that's your team, the Pets. Um, that that was one of the overtime games. Um, yeah, yeah, man. How, 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 how did it go for you? This are obviously disappointed with the result. I thought we had an opportunity um, when we won the toss for the overtime, um, and we asked, you know, we received the ball, and then we didn't go for it on fourth and three. I thought we had them. I thought we, were, you know, Mac Jones was was hitting the short and intermediate routes really good, um, even though. He, you know, just before the end of that last quarter, he he sort of didn't hit, um, what's his name, Kendrick Bourne. Um, and then Trevon Diggs, your guy, Trevon Diggs, eh, Skucks? <laughs> Got that freaking pick six and nearly stabbed me in the heart. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, obviously, you know, Mac Jones comes back, bro, next play, throws that 75-yarder in between um, Trevon Diggs and the safety coming over the top. Um, and Kendrick Bourne was away for 75 yards so you know put us put us in the lead but I think you know I didn't give them a chance um, Skarks did um, but it comes down to <laughs> comes down to like honestly it was defensively we did well like we got no superstars um, we got no it guys at the moment apart from Matt Judon who's playing like lights out um, but you know it Man, you gotta give credit where credit's due. Even though, like, you can say that we, I think we gave away like 500 and something yards. But you look at the Dallas Cowboys, bro. They got an O line that's stacked. All of them are healthy. I think, um, like, their left tackle's back. 
Tyron Smith, I think he had like a little injury, but he played lights out. Got Zach Martin playing at guard again. You know, you just got a whole bunch of the, bunch of them, mate. Eh? And um, then you've got like Zeke, and then you got Tony Pollard who's playing like lights out, and then you got CD Lamb and freaking um, Amari Cooper like shucks outside the numbers. Like, how are you gonna stop all of that? You know, and then they got their sly flipping tight end Blake Jarwin and flipper who catches his, you know, that odd that odd pass here and there and. Well, some, most likely it's a touchdown so look man bigger bigger game I think we are in that rebuilding phase which kind of sucks um, but I think the good thing for us though is that we're not in a strong division um, I think we're 2-4 and four. Dolphins are 1-5 and five. and then who is it the Jets yeah for, you know, Jets are going to be the Jets <laughs> and then if we can if we can sneak in there somehow in the, you know in the wild <coughs> Um, for a wild card then you know all good to us but looking at our schedule you know we got the Jets this week which is winnable um, Chargers the following week so don't know what that's going to be like after you know that dud that Justin Herbert and their and their boys put up offensively um, we got the Panthers and I was going to like I, I watched that Panthers Vikings game me eh? bro straight up Sam Donald is bad bro honestly he's shockingly terrible um, as the game wore on he just like regressed they was flip man those throws just weren't getting to their guy um he was holding on to the ball he was hesitant and his passing you know and you can't be like that you can't be a quarterback like that you gotta like throw it in and um trust your receivery and if not then shucks then flip you just gotta start again short term memory loss like look at what mac jones done there and he's a near rookie throw throws that pick six next play throws that flipping right in between um to kendrick osborne so like I don't know, but uh, I think the highlight, um, like we got the Browns and then the Falcons. So there's a couple of winnable games there. The ones that we probably will struggle with is challenging the Bills twice um, and then the Titans. We've never been good against the Titans. I think Mike Rabel's got us, eh? Like he knows us inside out. Um, and then we'll see how we go. I think realistically, might finish like 9 and 8. You know or eight or nine it's one of those two things so nothing to be angry about but definitely gives hope for the future bro mac jones is real deal bro straight up i'll be honest you, you did a good call last podcast because you you said um trevon Diggs is gonna in- intercept and uh that was a really important intercept that <laughs> he got in that game but um yeah man it was an exciting game but i got it's funny because um because on my fantasy um Juju's injured, so I had to take him out. Guess I replaced him with um, Kendrick Bourne. Oh so, man, that was lucky, man. I got that. I was like, woohoo, when he scored that touchdown, man. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you end up winning? Yeah, I won that. I won that one. What was your total score? Uh, it was 119, I think. Oh, um, yeah. You don't do um, points for receptions or bonus points for 100 plus games or anything like that? Man, I don't even know how it works, eh? Oh, you just won, just <laughs> won just going off, I'm just going off the flow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Um, did I get 118? What did I get? Oh, 116. I won. But yeah, man. Um, how about you, Adam? Did you check out the game and, <clears throat> and, what, uh, and what's your thoughts on the game? Yeah, like last podcast, I, I kind of just said that I thought, um, you know, a lot of the, the scouting that they did with Mac um, me and Landry were talking about his um, his release. You know, the, his time from getting from snap to release and his um, his IQ in the pocket. Um, I think he's similar to Lamar in the fact that like he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder, but he's new to the league. So I think him understanding the aura of Tom Brady and coming into that versus Cam Newton, who's like, you know, I'm Cam Newton. I'm just going to come in and do what I do, which is fine. You know, he's he's an established QB, and it's always going to be hard to kind of shake that but I also don't think Cam Newton like fitted the um the the blueprint for what the Patriots are going to do because Patriots are going to do what they're going to do like Bill Belichick's not going to change his shit up he's you got to fit that because he bases his whole everything around that so and I think they found Mac you know they found a gem in him because he literally fits it he can fit in um so when you get someone like that all they got to do is just get through the teething problems um, and like Lando said, like, I think he's a real deal. Um, so I think coming up against these other teams, you know, push the Cowboys, push the Bucks. Like, I think it's going to be 
uh, a great confidence builder for him. Um, and in that environment, you know, Patriots uh, dynasties, I think that'll filter across everyone and instill them with that that confidence. If they miss out on a wild wild card spot this season, then like next season, I think they're back to being, you know, lethal weapon that the Patriots have been for the longest time. So um, I actually think this is a good season compared to last season for them. Two seasons out of losing Tom Brady, and you've already already found Mac. You know this guy. I I think they got no problems moving forward. <clears throat> hmm. Choice, man. Cool. Um. The other game I want to touch on. Um. N- not the Steelers and Seahawks. The Titans and Bills. <laughs> um. That was a Monday night football game, which was Tuesday over here. So. The Titans with that one, 34 to 31. It was, it was real close. Especially the last uh, bit of that fourth quarter. Like, there are so many what-ifs at the end of that game, you know. And it, it could have gone either way if things went there anyone's way. So, yeah, man. How was that game? I only caught the last buddy. Skucks, what about you? Um, like I said last podcast, you know, it's just another New York team. Um, but honestly, to, to be perfectly honest, I think it was um, it was a game that was there for the Bills to win and they should have won. Um, you know, they've been doing well this season. Um, and for them, it was kind of, I mean, in terms of, you know, how the Titans are going this season, they're 4-2 and two, um, and so are the Bills now. Um so in saying that the titans are no walkover and i mean they've got amazing they got amazing um basically the whole front office they, they got vayrell um they got Tannehill, who is always you know he's always going to pull through but um they're a bit of a wild card team the the titans because on any given day you get derrick henry playing the way he did like it doesn't matter who you are you could you could be you could have zero losses it could be your final pre it could be your final game before the playoffs and you'll lose to them so um I think I, I don't think you can look too much into it. Um, if you're on the Bills, um, it's an anomaly. You're going to have those games, but at the same time, you know, if they pulled through, it, it really would have strengthened. Um, I guess strengthened their their um, voice and saying like, "We're here. This is our season, and we're actually going to turn things over." At this point, it doesn't take away from it, but you know, it's a small blemish, but it's it's one that can be a little bit worrying because these are the types of games that you want to just say, nah, we, we actually we won, we showed our character um, you know, if you're th- talking about like the Ravens, you know, that, that character building game, they lose to the Ravens but then, um, the Raiders, sorry but then they beat KC and then they go on this huge run, so it's one of those games where like, you should have you should have won it, but if you lose it, you don't want to then see them go down um but yeah, as a as a old New England fan, you love to see a New York team get the L, drop a dub. That's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, considering it was week six, right? It was week six, and you know you refused to go for the kick to tie the game for overtime. What would you? Well, was that a good decision to because? You know, they've they've got a star in, in, in Josh Allen, and you want to put all your cards behind them, right? So, I, what I'm saying is, was it worth it? Was it worth the risk? Um, man, you gotta. I think as a quarterback, you gotta love that your head coach like backs you. You know, like you know, in that situation, it's fourth and one. The guy's six foot five, bro. You know, he he takes the snap. I end up watching the highlights, so he takes the snap and he slips. Hmm. You know and. And as a superstar, you do, or as the next, you know, the next superstar or the rising star in the league, you know, you don't want to have these little moments where it defines you. So go back to what Skarks was saying, is, is this going to be a turning point? And I'd like to highlight, like last week, bro, they took Kansas City through the mud, straight up. They had a downright, like, bro, you want to fight? Let's fight, dog fight. And then <laughs> long comes, long comes the alpha dog, eh? <laughs> 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 and he comes and like, yo, let's yo, yeah, let's rumble then, let's rumble in the junkyard. I got you. Um, like so, you knew it was like, who, if you're gonna take on that whole persona as a, yo, we're tough. Like we're we're gonna be a tough team. Like if you think about tough teams, you think about like the '70s Steelers, 
the the Ravens when Ray Lewis and Ed Reed were in there, you know, that's a, like it's tough. And like if they want to take on that persona with Sir, remember Sean McDonough, uh defensive coach, and he had that with the Panthers, and um, you know when he had Luke Kuechly and Thomas Davis when they went on that run to the Super Bowl, uh, anyway, um, so like they're trying to build that persona, but when a dog like that comes, bro, when you know Derrick Henry is like on like on your on your schedule, you like mark that and go, yo, we're gonna smack this guy. He's not gonna get fifty yards on us. But <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> <laughs> Takes you for a run, <laughs> seventy-five meters, bro. Did you see the separation speed for the guy? Dang! Apparently, like he was the fastest for that week. He like nearly hit twenty-two miles per hour or something, bro. At his fastest point, it was like twenty-one point seven something, bro. It was crazy. And the guy's like, I don't know, I don't know what pounds is, but he's like two forty-seven. What's that, Skucks and like kgs? That's that's like a Julian Savier type it's like a lomu guy but yeah, like his lomu. pace bro his pace when he got through that gap i was like flash go <laughs> hard out let a bolt so um i guess like for that to happen too though like derrick henry can like create that stuff on his own name but man there were some holes um that the o-line created would be real worrying for that d-line d-line and um and those linebackers that front seven like those holes were massive and it didn't take derrick henry a lot to just shimmy through and go so they got to be worried about that moving forward um and just you know like like what skux and i were alluding to very if you're gonna have that persona bro as a junkyard dog like yo we're gonna like smack you when we're playing defense bro then you gotta take that all on and make sure you show up and and play like that so something but coming back to your original question bro yeah i think that was the right decision like you pay that guy like you trust that guy and like he's your best guy so why wouldn't you put it in his hands? I think in hindsight though, and like give yourself, you know, you're you're already inside the twenty, just kick it over and come back and, and win the game. You know, that way. But you know, hindsight's beautiful way. <laughs> I thought we had the, he's a superstar hit. when he went for that uh, first down, right on the line, and, and he just got fell short. Man, Yo. he was a body on the line guy. Yeah. And for yeah. QB to do that, that's scary for any coach, man, you know, but man, he's the body on the line. <laughs> Yo, that's like reminiscent of um, that guy, the great Denver Broncos quarterback, John Elway, if you see him a couple of times. Um, I think it was in the second Super Bowl. Bro, the guy got, like, he dove, he got flipped. You know how you do, like, a helicopter? He got that done. I'm like, bro, the guy's 37, bro. <laughs> I'm like, freaking heck, man, and you go, <laughs> get to the chopper. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but hey. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Like Skax was saying, bro, gotta come back to it. It's um, how do they, how do they respond moving forward? Mm. That's all. Yeah, Derek Henry, he's a beast, man. And man, what what was he like last year? Oh, brother, Ooh, doing the same. That's that same. was the Russian king. Yeah, he was the Russian, he's been the Russian king for the last two seasons. Yeah, yeah. he's been yeah. doing that. <laughs> um, I like one one team to look out for. Um, on the schedule for the Titans is when he challenged the Jaguars. But for some reason, bro, he just plays lights out. He, he gets like flipping 70 yard runs sometimes. Like he, he got this massive 99 yarder. If you ever see the highlight, bro, the hole's like flipping like the skinny, bro. And next minute he's like fending off two people and he's gone. And oh, it's just crazy. He's He's got some, some meme, some beast runs, bro. Reminiscent of um, Marshawn Lynch. Just crazy. Or um, like LeGarrette Blunt. And his, mm. it's like Garrett Blunt when he was at the Pats, and then Derrick Henry yeah. took over. Bro, it's 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 it's. I think what the the finding thing for Derrick Henry is like he's a bit shifty, eh, bro. He's got a little bit of a step, and that's what you see a big guy like that. You see, Joe, like imagine Joe Joe Lumbi with a little step, bro, little step and gas, and that's sort of what differentiates him from like a bruising back to a bro. I'm gonna step your ass and let a ball. Yeah, nice, nice boys. Um, yeah, we just want to wrap up week six. So, was, was there anything else in, in this week that you guys are interested in, in mentioning or worth mentioning? Um, just a little shout out to the Jags, you know, the kicker. They signed them like the day before, <laughs> 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 they signed them the day before, and then he goes and kicks that winning field goal. So, oh. shot, shot, man. What's his name? Matthew Wright. <laughs> <laughs> also, man, I think you got yourself a contract. <laughs> Are we Adam? Any any last thoughts for week six? 
Oh, it's just great to see the Steelers get up, eh? In, in overtime. Great to see them get up, you know, especially over the Seahawks. Quality, quality opposition. It's great. Great to see, man. What about you, Cam? What do you feel about that? Man, I'm, it's hard. It's, you know, these wins we're having, these are hard wins, man. These are hard wins, and, like, it's frustrating as well. I'm still not convinced about, I'm still not convinced on uh, a Rufflesburg, eh? Like, the old man needs to run, man. He needs to run. He needs to do some ducking, diving, you know? But, uh... Might need to go hit up um, TB12. <laughs> Mate needs to start eating his seasonal veg. <laughs> yeah. Avocado ice cream meals. <laughs> it was... How did Najee Harris play, bro? How did Najee play? Yeah, I think he's going to be the only consistent guy. Consistent guy for us. I see him, t- I see him in the future, maybe a couple of seasons, to be up there with uh, the King. King Henry, you know? Not probably not as powerful, maybe, but more finesse. Huh? He's got more uh, agility on him. But I think he's the only. Being, he's N- Najee Harris has only has probably been the only consistent um, stealer we've had. Mm. Um, probably another guy that I liked watching. I think I watched one of your games where um, is that tight end. I think his name Pat Framuth or something. Framuth, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. How did he go? You know what? I picked him because he 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 he's a rookie. Eh? He had a good preseason. Man, he he scored a couple of touchdowns during his preseason. So I was like, "Yep, I'll take that guy on my I'll put that guy on my team." He's been going all right, okay. He's been sharing sharing tight ends with um, Ebron with Eric Ebron. So, but you need to drop that guy, Us. <laughs> <laughs> man, ever since he left the Colts, bro, that guy can't catch a catch a cold, man. <laughs> I don't know how many times I saw him like been like put up for him like nice last year, mm. but the guy just drops a cold man. I was like, oh <laughs> come on, bro. The guy Ben Rufflesburger is thirty six, thirty seven, man. Come on, give him a break, man. Yeah, no, nah, but I think I think Pat Farmer will be. I think he's a good um, first in line for for for, for tenants. But um, yeah, boys, um, just wanna now check out our uh, week seven. And um, I just want to ask you guys, what what what's the game of, of week seven? You guys, you guys reckon? We got got a couple of them, bro. The Bengals and Ravens, only because it's a division game. Um, it's only one win. Is it one win separating them? Mm. One's five and one. The other one's four and two. Mm. Um, part Titans Chiefs. Yeah, it's a big game for the Chiefs to get up for if um, King Henry's in there. Um, Washington Packers, that should be all right. Man, to be honest, bro, I watched that Washington. You know how we um, watch that Washington game. Man, they just—I don't know what it was, but Sharks the Chiefs just flipping blitz to me. And not to say that the Packers don't have that, but they do have Aaron Rodgers and Devonte Adam. You know, and if they're not gonna be a second half team, bro. Devonta Adam can like flip and take you to school eh, on some of those routes. He's crazy good. Um, but I don't know the because apparently Washington's defense was supposed to be number one coming into the league. Eh? Um, they were highly touted by all by everyone, um, but they're just not showing up. Eh? I think they've got like three first rounds or four first rounders on that that D line. Obviously they got um, Chase Young. They got another guy Deron um, Payne, and then they got another guy called Jonathan Allen. But Man, who knows what what they're up to at the moment, bro? Who knows? So I don't know. Like, yeah, you could say the same about the Packers. Yeah, to be honest, it doesn't look like there's any like um top clashes. It's all kind of unbalanced. Well, there's one, bro. That could be kind of funny. You got uh, Matt Stafford versus um, Jared Goff, Lions versus um, the Rams. <laughs> So you never knew. <laughs> See what Sean McVay does, what Jared Goff and Sean McVay do at the end of the game. <laughs> so sharks, I don't. There's not. Yeah. Patriots will beat Jets though. I'll tell you that much because New York teams don't mean shit <laughs> against the Patriots. <laughs> and he's a rookie quarterback, bro. Bill Belichick's got like a crazy record against rookie quarterbacks. Eh? Hmm. Mac Mills will eat him up. Mac Mill. 
<laughs> Who? Mac Jones. <laughs> TB12 oh. will be eating a carrot while he's throwing touchdowns to Antonio Brown against the Bears. Man, how good is that, eh, bro? How good is that? Your, Man. your guy from your Steelers camp, mm. maybe? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Catching two oh. touchdowns. Do you see that breakaway? <laughs> nah, he's been playing good. He's been playing good for for the Bucks, man. He's he's been playing good. Another another guy that's popped up <laughs> is is Le'Veon Bell. I think he scored oh, a touchdown. Uh, he did. Yeah. Is he playing for the Ravens? Ravens. Yeah, that's Ravens. What I thought it. Yeah. I don't know, but he looks skinny, man. Mm. He's lost. He's lost a ton of weight. He looks like a freaking wide receiver. <laughs> Ken was messaging me when the Bucks were playing the Eagles, and he's like. God damn it, why couldn't AB do that for the Steelers? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? He was doing that, us. He was, he was but you that. know, he didn't have TV throwing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, BB. <laughs> well, you know, at least he mentioned in his um, press conference, whatever it was, you know, he he, he gave big ups to um, to Big Ben for helping him in his career. You know? Well, I think that was a reciprocal relationship there, us. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, but um, now apart from that, I don't think there's there's a lot happening in this in this game. Oh, well, this week anyway, a couple I'm, of salad dollars, Falcons and Dolphins. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the Cardinals Texans now. You know, Cardinals definitely project, projected to win this one, so they will probably get them up to seven and zero. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you reckon they'll go unbeaten? Who knows? What have they got in week eight? Uh... Packers. Ooh, yeah, that'll, be that'll, be, that'll be the that'll game. game. Well, they're playing without Chandler Jones, eh? And um, he played their first game. He got five sacks in the first week. He's been out for the last two to three weeks, I think. So, I don't know if he's coming back. I don't know what the injury report is on him. But, man, if you... Man, he could be eating up. Or oh, that um, their rookie quarterback over at um, the Houston's, eh? Mm. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Hey, Lando, you know, um, week seven, there's a few, there's, there's a couple of buys, teams will buy. So, is your um, fantasy team in, in this array now? Now there's a few buys? Nah, my, my team is solid or something. Oh. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Got a solid team. Got a solid team. Um, yeah, we got hits of bonus points in, in our one. So, I had a slightly higher score than yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to put Josh Allen on my bench because you know obviously he's not playing. So I, oh, I, yeah, I had um the guy that's replacing um uh, Baker Maysfield. Um, Case Keenum. Case Keenum, yeah. Ooh. So he was available, so I grabbed him just to put him up for Ooh. one week. Gave him a one week contract, you know. Yeah, yeah. I ended up having um <laughs> I ended up playing Justin Herbert, <laughs> thinking <laughs> there was gonna be a blow up. And then, um, because I got Matt Stafford, eh? Mm. So, like, Justin Herbert's on bye this week. Um, So I'm playing Matt Stafford at the moment. But there's one guy. Watch out for this one running back. Jonathan Taylor from the Colts. The guy cracked it last week. He got about 147 on the ground. Mm. Um, And he got that, um, I think he, or combined, sorry, and he ended up getting that little um, pass and taking it all the way. Ended up cutting through the defense. So him, another guy to watch out. Jamar Chase if you can get that guy else, that guy's on my fantasy league but he's on bro he's scored a touchdown in nearly every single week oh Jamar Chase you might want to get the kicker from the Jags <laughs> <laughs> they, only, they only got him the day before then he kicked the winning kick bro you're talking about kickers weren't you a kicker for Takapuna back in the day nah passer <laughs> <laughs> oh, box kicker box kicker <laughs> but yeah nah nah it's um yeah, got a couple of yeah. We play with defensive players also too, linebackers, DBs, and um, oh, D linemen. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's that's the advanced right. advanced league you're in. Apparently, I've been in this league for about seven years. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> advanced. Oh. All right. Far, far well, Yo. thanks, boys. That's us for another week of uh, NFL podcasting. But um, yeah, man, we'll. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that um, Chiefs Titans game. It looks like that's the only best game th- this week. But uh, yeah, man, yeah. thanks for thank jumping yous. on the podcast, boys. Nah, man, thank you, Cam. Appreciate thanks, it. Um, 
Just want to thank um, Skax's Wi-Fi internet provider as well. <laughs> bro, don't blame it on my wifey. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching you, bro. I'm like... just doing robots. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're playing statues or something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thanks, Cam. No worries, man. Have a good weekend. Peace. Alright.